Okay, we're going to talk about different conditions that we can have that will trip a circuit breaker. This is an inverse time circuit breaker. Okay, inverse time, it works off heat, it works like a seesaw. The higher the current, the quicker it trips. The lower the current is over the rating, the longer it takes to trip, okay, inverse time. Now, many of us have gone and reset a breaker because it was tripping, go pow, reset it again, pow. Well, then uh, we might have reset another breaker and it takes forever to trip. Maybe you have a tool shed or an outbuilding and you have your breaker panel mounted on the south wall. And the only time this 15 amp breaker trips is in the summertime, around two in the afternoon if you're using it. These breakers don't care where heat comes from. Heat normally comes from the current that has passed through the breaker. But you see at two in the afternoon in the summertime, the sun's shining down on the south side of a metal building. If your breaker panel is mounted on the inside, the heat's radiating through. So instead of, this is a 15 amp breaker, so instead of 15 amps, this thing might trip at 13 or 14. So even though it'd be a loaded up circuit, 13 amps on a 15 amp breaker, it's okay until the outside heat gets to it. So outside heat can trip it. But let's talk about what normally trips these breakers. It takes six to eight cycles for the inside of this breaker to heat up, okay? So we're on a 60 hertz power grid in this country. So six to eight hertz is 0.1 to 0.12 seconds. During that time, this little fella is trying to heat up. It's trying to trip, it can't. It is during this 10th of a second plus that you don't have any protection down line. So instead of 15 amps under certain conditions, you can have thousands of amps. At home, it'll be something less than 10,000 amps or 10 kA but you could have three or 4,000 amps that goes downstream in one or two or three or four cycles. And that's where you need an interrupting rating. This breaker has three ratings. The 15 amps is a standard rating. Then this is a 120 slash 240, that's the voltage rating. Then if you look at the side of this, this is 10 kA. So it has a 10,000 amp instantaneous current rating or interrupting rating. Whenever the power company makes your overhead drop or your underground lateral into your house, they size the transformer and size the wire size for your feeders so that you'll never see over 10,000 amps under a dead short condition in your house. In industry though, you're gonna need 65 kA a uh, 200 kA breaker because you have a stiffer bus in a plant. You use more power and it's more important for the voltage not to sag. Okay, so now let's talk about conditions. Whenever you reset this breaker, it goes pow. You have a short somewhere. So we have a 110, 120 volt receptacle here. Okay, this is our hot. This is our neutral. And here's our ground. I'm gonna draw a ground symbol there, okay? Now, right over here, we have 15 amp inverse time circuit breaker. Now, the first condition we're gonna talk about is a line to line short. So on a line to line short, we're talking about a short between hot and neutral. Okay, right there, between hot and neutral. As soon as that shorts out, this here's time, this here's current magnitude, okay? 
within one cycle, instantaneously, that current goes out the roof. The only thing holding it back is the small resistance in your wire. So for a, resi for a residential application, you can have two, three, four, five thousand 5,000 amps in a couple of cycles, up to six to eight cycles that it takes for the inverse time breaker to trip, okay? So if you're ever resetting, it goes pow! It could be a line to line short, okay? Now, let's talk about a second condition. Let's remove that short, okay? We remove that current. Now, a ground fault. A ground fault means that one of our ungrounded current carrying conductors has shorted out to ground. So when this happens, again, it's just like the line to line short. The only thing holding your current back is just a little bit of resistance in the wire. So within a fraction of a cycle, bam, okay, current goes out the roof, okay, within one or two cycles. It's going to stay there until this breaker heats up six to eight cycles, and the inverse time breaker will trip and open your circuit. So if you reset a breaker, it goes pow probably looking for one of these two conditions, a line to line short for 120 volts to be line to neutral, your current carrying conductors, or it can be a ground fault where your hot has come into contact with your ground. Okay, does that help troubleshooting? It should. Okay, let's remove that short and let's talk about an overload. An overload condition is something a little different. If we get rid of our current line there again, and let's say that you're having Christmas dinner and everybody brings over the deer meat or whatever, because everybody always cooks the best deer meat or whatever, right? So the first person that shows up, they plug their crock pot in. It pulls seven amps, okay? So the, everybody always wants the meat at one end of the counter, right? So for Christmas or Thanksgiving dinner, next person shows up, plugs their crock pot in, that's going to pull four amps. Now, you got 11 amps on that 15 amp circuit. Third person shows up with their deer meat or turkey or whatever, then that's going to pull another four amps. There's 15 amps, okay? So guess what happens when the next person pulls up and it pulls five amps? There's 20 amps on a 15 amp breaker. That breaker's gonna sit there for just a few minutes and heat up. It's not gonna go bam as soon as you get to 16 amps, 15 amp breaker. At 20 amps, this thing can sit there for several seconds or minutes, depending on where the panel's at. If it's an outdoor panel and it's cold outside, it can sit there for several minutes because remember, it doesn't care where the heat comes from. So if it's cold outside at Christmas dinner, it's gonna be cold. So it's gonna to have to heat up more. It may take 20 amps to heat this up to trip instead of 15 or 16, whatever. This is overload. We keep plugging stuff in until it trips. Motors are the same way. Whenever a motor is running and whenever it is pulling nameplate current, we're asking for nameplate horsepower off the end of that shaft nameplate current. If we don't have a load at the, on the end of that shaft, we're pulling no load current, which will be a little less. And your shaft speed, because you don't have a load on it, will be a little more than nameplate speed. So if you've got a 1725 RPM motor, it might be turning 1740, okay? Now, as you start loading that shaft up, let's say you got a conveyor belt and little Johnny puts too much gravel on the conveyor belt. That load starts climbing until it gets up past where your overload heaters are set. Your overload heaters does what this breaker does, okay? This breaker in your house has to take care of line to line short, has to take care of a ground fault, has to take care of an overload, okay? Has to do all three. 
but on motors, we separate out the overload. And we use an overload block or an overload heaters. And we custom fit that starter to that motor so that it, they can tell whenever that motor, excuse me, is overloaded, okay? So, all three of these apply to breakers, all three of these apply to motors. But on motors, we separate the overload out and we use an overload block or a heater block for that. We use fuses or a circuit breaker to take care of the line to line short or the ground fault on a motor circuit. So if we reset a breaker and go pow, line to line short or ground fault. Reset it and it takes 10, 15 minutes to trip and it trips again or it trips once a day, you probably got an overload. Now this is an ironclad 100%, but it gives us a starting place, you know? You could have a line to line short that's out there on a piece of equipment vibrating and maybe it just runs once a day. So then it's gonna trip once a day if it's rubbing a uh, insulation off wire or something on a cord. But it's a good starting place. Send me any questions you have on email. I hope this helps. See you in lab.